Okay, so there's no secret that the DJI O3 air unit performs very well, but let's be honest, this thing is really expensive. We're talking about $220 per unit. That can add up pretty quickly. For example, I wanna convert my five drones here to DJI. That's over a thousand dollars. So unless you have deep pockets, that's not really a viable option. But what if there was a way I could just buy one air unit and use it for all my drones? Well, that's not possible with this trick unit right here. So let's take a look at it and see if it works. Okay, so this concept of swapping cameras and VTX isn't new. It has been out for a long time, but it has been brought to the forefront again recently with these smaller drones like the Pablo Pico. Now this one here is a pretty good drone. I've done a full review on this one, but it features a VTX and camera setup, which is kind of modular. For example, you can put a DJI O3 on here or the Walkman system on here and it's easily and hot swappable, meaning you can just remove four bolts and take this off. In fact, they sell this drone only without the VTX and you have to provide the VTX for it. So this is a pretty cool concept and as you can see, it makes this thing here very modular and you save a lot of money if you wanna buy more than one of these drones. So the same principle will be applied to what we're doing here today. In fact, we'll be using the same VTX for this demonstration here. So if this works, we might be saving a lot of money in the long run. So here's the box right here, and this was brought to my attention by one of my viewers. Uh, thanks Brian for pointing this out to me. I took a look at it and I said, mm, maybe this might be useful in the future. So here it is, it took a while to get here obviously. Let's open it up and see what's inside. First we have some kind of like a double side tape or some kind of foam. I don't know what that's for, we'll take a look at that. Then we have our screws, looks like M2 screws and an Allen wrench. We have our harness which is Pretty good actually. Let's take a look at it. It's actually two harnesses, which is, I think the best part of this whole kit right here. Now, they didn't have to do this, but they did. And this is gonna make this whole installation easy. Even DJI, when you buy the O3 air unit, they provide only one, I think. So having two additional, this is great for mounting this whole setup on numerous drones. Besides that you have some TPU mounts, we'll talk about that, that's to mount to the actual action camera mount here. And here's the actual part right here. It looks like two alloys, and it's obviously split in half so you can put the air unit in here. So let's take this out and see what it looks like. Yeah, that's some kind of an alloy, like, I don't know, a composite material. It feels like aluminum, and we're just gonna put our camera and VTX in this one cage here. So the first part here is just to get my VTX. Obviously, if you have a new one, I just bought a new one for this Pavo Pico. So this will be the perfect candidate to take it off. Perfect. That's it, this is what we need. And let's see how we're gonna mount this. Uh, it's my first time doing it. There's, there was some instructions, but it wasn't that clear. As you can see right here, just <laughs> shows you how to put that in there. So here's the part I talked about where you can use your antenna mask right here. So in case you wanna use your original antenna that came with the DJI O3 air unit, you can use that. I would recommend you use it for these larger drones. These are five and six inch drones. These things can carry a lot of weight and uh, you might get the best performance with that long antenna. I'm gonna go with this one and see if I can stuff these two antennas in here as well. It may or may not work, but I'm willing to try it out and see. All right, let's get this, these screws out, the hardware. And the shortest one goes to the front and then the, all the others are long ones. So they're gonna go in the appropriate places. Wow, this TPU is tight. You can hear it squeaking in there. I'm getting a workout guys. All right. I keep seeing it every time I assemble a, a drone or something, I'm like, I gotta get a motorized driver. That would help right now. If you guys have any, or what's your best motorized driver? Let me know in the comments, I'll take a look at it. Maybe that company will wanna work with me or maybe I can buy one and just do a review on it. Whew, that was a lot. You know, let me stop guessing. Okay, so I did figure out the orientation for this. I did go online and take a look at the actual manual in, in English. And this one here just says USB-C. So the USB-C port should be facing over here. And this one here is the one for the SD card. It doesn't, it doesn't say it in English, but that's what it, it should be. So uh, once you put that orientation like this, it does make a lot more sense. You have a slot here for the USB-C. Put that right there. 
and a slot here for the micro SD cards. This is perfect right here. So in the right orientation, the antenna does face down opposed to up. And with these shorter antennas, it's not going to reach the actual antenna mount. Therefore, I did remove the dual antenna. So if you have a dual antenna mask, like some of the old walk snail or the original air unit, then this might work. That's not gonna work for my case with these short antennas that was on the Pavo Pico. So I am gonna reinstall the original antenna mount for the DJI O3 air unit, which is what comes from the factory. So I do have to remove these two shorter antennas. All right. Now you can also know I also put the harness on here in place so that once I put this in here, I can fish it through. Wow, there's gonna be a lot of bends. I'm gonna fish both wires this way. underneath at the bottom. Woo! Hopefully you saw that, it's in there. And then the DJI camera, that's not too bad. All right, so I have one camera mount in there. I think we're done guys. Let's just put this top piece on. We should be good. Check that out. I'm gonna tack it in a little bit. So I have my harness here out, hanging out. I can fish this through here. And there you go, it's looking pretty nice. This thing feels sturdy though. It feels like a legit product. Here it is. Pretty cool. Check that out. This is pretty much done, I'm just gonna plug this into my flight controller. Now this is the easy and or hard part, not really the hard part. Um, some flight controllers you have to solder it on there. Some flight controllers you can just plug it in. Let's see here, I can use my Nazgul or the diatone. I'm gonna use the diatone because the diatone is bigger, it's analog, and this would be the perfect example for this situation here. This is like a long range drone, I use it for long range drone. It has a one watt VTX in the back. And all we have to do is just put this through the action cam mount, which is pretty standard for any drone. I think this will be the easiest way to do it, especially on this drone. And then all you have to do is just angle this the right way. It looks kind of weird, but you just angle this forward or back. Now, if you have a flight control that has the DJI O3 or compatible, you just plug it in. I think this, controller does have that feature. So I'm gonna just take the, the strap off, take a look at it. Now I'm not gonna tell you how to install DJI on your drone, every drone is different so it's not that specific. But I am gonna take this top plate off, take a look at it and see if I have a plug, just plug it in. Okay, so I have the top plate back on, I have the action camera slash O3 air unit back on the front. And this thing looks <laughs> it looks interesting, it looks different, that's for sure. Uh, I did disable the VTX, I did unplug it. This, this one was easy, this was a very modular drone actually. Everything has plugs on it, the flight controller has tons of plugs. And luckily for me guys, this flight controller was a, a Mamba F7 app with the DJI. So it is made specific to plug into the DJI uh, harness. So there was no soldering, it was just as easy as plugging it in. So I haven't gone to beta flight yet to uh, get the right port yet, but this thing looks amazing. We can technically take this off. We can technically take the front camera off if we want to. We don't need two FPV cameras. This thing looks pretty cool, interesting. Let's just go for a flight and see how this thing here behaves. Okay, so we're back from our test flight and this did a pretty decent job. Not perfect, but it did a good enough job. Now I flew this on my six inch drone and in my FPV goggle feed, I didn't see any crazy vibration. Now if you pixel people look really closely, 
you'll see some micro vibrations in there and that could be due to this device or just due to the tune on my drone. Now this is not the smoothest drone that I own. This was the best drone to test this out and it worked decently well. Now that's a testament to the TPU on this, removing any kind of vibrations or resonance coming from the drone into this camera. So this did a pretty decent job. Now my biggest concern going into this test was how much this camera here was recessed into this cage. Now typically we know that the O3 Air camera has a really wide field of view and this thing being so recessed, I figured that would be in the view. Now, to my surprise, while flying in the goggles, there really wasn't much of the cage in there. There was just, and I mean, just a slight amount on the two bottom corners of my FPV feed. You can see it in the video. Changing the view, the field of view on your camera really doesn't show up in your FPV goggles. It just changes or alters the field of view going to the DVR. So because I do shoot in the widest field of view, the cage did show up in the field of view. So if you're gonna do any kind of professional shoot, you might wanna consider that when making your decision. Now that was my biggest concern going into this and there is some space here available on this adjustment right here that you can slide it forward. I do have it maximum forward, but there is still some material on here where you can extend it even more. So I probably will do that with a Dremel or some kind of tool and just extend the camera a little bit further. In this case, it is well protected. It is below the flat line level of this cage. But if you do want obstruction free footage, then in that case, it just might show up. So overall, this thing did a pretty good job. Now, this wasn't just all rainbows and sunshine. There was some concern and some issues with this altogether. Now, the first issue I had was this cage here or this setup here putting my receiver into bootloader mode. Now at the time, I couldn't figure out why that would happen just by installing this would cause my receiver to go into bootloader mode, but I tried and tried and my radio just couldn't connect to the receiver. Now it took me a day or two to find out the solution after looking at the schematics. And I realized that this included harness right here does compensate or does account for the built-in receiver in the O3 Air unit. So this may or may not be a factor. Now, if you are a DJI 2 remote or a DJI remote user, then you are in good luck because this harness here does provide the RX links to your receiver and from the air unit. So if you do have one of those DJI controllers, this is pretty much a plug and play affair. So because I had an Express LRS receiver and the harness giving me the receiver in my air unit, it just didn't let it bind, it just, no matter what I did. And this thing really got me for a few days because I actually installed a pull-up resistor to my receiver to force it out of the bootloader mode and I was unsuccessful. I almost just gave up on it. But yes, this was the culprit right here. So it's as easy as just depinning that one wire so that it's not connected to the flight controller and therefore this will not receive a signal. In my case, I just snipped that one wire. As you can see, I have some tape on here and that fixed the problem immediately. So we were good to go. So if you are gonna be using a UART based receiver or serial based receiver, then just remember that, that there is a receiver in the O3 air unit and this harness does account for it. And that could give you some error messages. Now the second issue I have with this cage is the durability of this product here. Now, as I said before, this thing here is some kind of an alloy, like a steel or aluminum. Now, although it's very, very light, that doesn't seem to be a problem. The issue here is that I had a very violent crash actually on my first flight testing this, hence the reason why I have such little coverage flying this thing here. Now, I had a big crash here due to a really sagging battery. Now, I have 6S batteries, but the battery was charged, connected, and a few seconds afterwards, I'm coming in for a low pass and I don't know, well, I did see low voltage, so it, it had to have been a sag. Less than a minute into a flight, it just sagged out and didn't provide any more thrust. Now, it could also be some kind of a desync with the props or the motors. Uh, it looks really weird. I can show you the footage. And you can see in the footage, it's just weird. Just lost it, and this thing had a crash from maybe, I don't know, 10 feet or something? I don't know, maybe less than that. And I was expecting not too much of a damage, okay, guys? But this thing took on some pretty good damage. Now, I did say that the TPU on here was good for reducing the vibration and resonance going to the camera. I do agree with that. But at the same point, I didn't expect to have a crack or broken TPU mount on here. Now this is the main mount that supports this onto your camera mount on your drone. 
the mount on the drone looks really good, but this TPU here actually just broke off and kind of cracked. Um, I'm looking at it closer here now, and I've never seen TPU do that, honestly. So I don't know if this is some cheaper quality TPU on here. It's kind of weird that that happened. Now it's as simple as just reprinting a new one, and I probably will do that in the near future. I just have to find the file, and I don't know if that's readily available, but I'll look for that and see if I can replace that. If not, I'll just buy a whole new unit. This thing is not too expensive between 10 and $20, and uh, that should be the, the, the solution for this. Just don't crash your drone, at least not head first, at least. All right, so having said that, what do I think about this uh, action cam replacement or this cage for your O3 Air unit? Well, I do think it's a decent product. It's a really good concept. Um, maybe they can work on this TPU mount on here, but I do think it's a really good concept. This thing will save you a lot of money in the long run instead of buying one or two or three multiple O3 Air units for each one of your drones. So this could save you a lot of money um, if you don't have this issue, if you don't crash your drone. But this works pretty good. This aluminum here, it is pretty light and strong and it, it does work pretty good. As you can see this little scuff mark on here. But overall, I did get a good image from this camera. There's very, very slight vibrations on there and that could be due to the actual drone. But if you can live with some of the cage and your field of view, then this should be good. Now, I will also alter this right here and maybe they can make some adjustments in the future. Maybe moving this slightly forward or giving us the option to move it forward or back the way we want to. The image is really good and no issues. This is a pretty cool design. You have access to all your USB-C ports, your SD card, and your antenna. Everything is made for the O3 Air unit. So overall, this did a pretty good job and can save you a lot of money depending on how many O3 Air units you wanna buy for your respective drones. In my case, I have like four or five drones that can use O3. And if I just buy this, then I can use one camera for all of that. Overall, this was also easy to install, especially in this drone specifically. It was just plugging this in here and plugging this into my flight controller and that was it. Now, having said that, this aluminum case here is very light but it does add some weight to your overall drone. So if you are finding a drone under four inches, then this may not be the product for you. I wouldn't put this on a three and a half inch drone. In that case, I would just take this out and then mount it in the normal locations for the drone. If you're finding a drone around four inches or larger, it really does make sense to have one of this. Maybe as a backup, um, maybe you wanna equip your drones with O3. In my case, I still have analog on here. This is a five, this is a six inch drone. This can carry everything on here. If you want a simple way to just convert your drones to digital or O3, then it really is a no brainer if you find a drone between four and seven inches or larger. So let me know what you think about this action cam replacement slash FPV replacement camera in the comments section down below. I'm kind of curious to know what you think about this or if there's any alternatives, any ways to improve this. Is this a pretty cool idea? I do think it's pretty cool. The execution, I think they had really good intentions, but I do think that you need to have premium parts to make it work. And hopefully I can improve on that in the near future. Having said that, I'll leave links to all these products down below, including the O3 Air unit and this little cage right here. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Peace.